Hey everyone, how's it going? Welcome back to the channel, Dylan here. Well, we have a massive bombshell of a video today with District Attorney Alvin Bragg that you do not want to miss, okay? We are exposing the truth about Alvin Bragg and I'm gonna actually share with you many things that you probably have never heard of or I can guarantee you that many of you watching have never seen all of the stuff I'm about to share with you guys, it is shocking. Trump has exposed the truth about Alvin Bragg. We're also diving into Letitia James as well. We might even touch on Fannie Willis. There's just so much to cover, and I wanna bring the truth out there because I believe the public deserves to know the truth about a man who is desperately trying, Donald J. Trump, by the way, about I want to bring you guys the truth about what's really happening to Donald Trump, to a man who is getting compared to Hitler by Hillary Clinton, the woman who married Bill Clinton, who had an affair on her with Monica Lewinsky and got a massage from one of Epstein's masseuses. Oh, and Hillary Clinton. Oh yeah, now I'm going to run for president. It's like this, such a, it's a circus, it feel like we're living in like a circus show, a circus act, a weird theater play. Uh, I don't know. Anyways, we're exposing the truth about District Attorney Alvin Bragg and what's going on between him, between Trump. We have a new update with this whole case as well, which we will be discussing. Before we jump in, my friends, we want to pray. We want to read the Bible because God comes first. Amen. I want to bring you guys the Bible and then get into the news because if I'm going to share the truth with you guys, we have to look in scripture because that's where the truth lies. Amen? Comment amen if you believe that. Today we are, and really leave an amen comment. I love going through and seeing your comments. They really inspire me and give me hope. Whenever I post a video, I always check, oh, how many amen comments are there? <laughs> I know it does. it doesn't really, you know, I shouldn't be looking at that like it's, you know, I know so many of you guys watch and don't leave a comment, but I don't know. It just kind of makes me a little happy. I'm not going to lie. And I love reading your guys' comments. Like, and yeah, you guys are awesome. I appreciate you guys so much. I feel like we're like a family here. All right. This comes from the book of Corinthians. This is a Bible verse on God's love. Let's read it. And let's also say a prayer for uh, Melania Trump and her mother. Um, they just had their funeral and... Yeah, let's just read this as a just a little offer to Melania and her mother and um, Melania's mother's um, husband, Victor, who, you know, he's uh, he's alone now. All right. Love is patient. Love is kind. It does not envy. It does not boast. It is not proud. It is not rude. It is not self-seeking. It is not easily angered. It keeps no record of wrongs. Love does not delight in evil, but rejoices with the truth. It always protects, always trusts, always hopes, always perseveres. Love never fails. But where there are prophecies, they will cease. Where there are tongues, they will be stilled. Where there is knowledge, it will pass away. For we know in part, and we prophesy in part, but when perfection comes, the imperfect disappears. When I was a child, I talked like a child. I thought like a child. I reasoned like a child. When I became a man, I put childish ways behind me. Now we see, but a poor reflection as in a mirror, then we shall see face to face. Now I know in part, then I shall fully know, even as I am fully known. And now these three remain, faith, hope, and love. But the greatest of these is love. Amen. Comment amen if you believe that God's love never fails. God's love is with each and every one of you. You watching this right now, just, just remember that. Okay, let's get into the update really, really quickly. Okay, so Alvin Bragg, there is a new update with this case, and Alvin Bragg's hush money case is an excellent plan B for holding Trump accountable, according to MSNBC, which... Quite frankly, I just see MSNBC as this whole liberal, I don't know. Anyways, the potential delay of Trump's federal criminal trial uh, raises a little discussed possibility. His first 
criminal trial could be held in Manhattan on state charges. So Trump's potentially first criminal charges could be in this case with Alvin Bragg, all right? Earlier this year, a New York grand jury indicted the former president for falsifying documents to cover up a $130,000 hush money payment to Stormy Daniels before the 2016 election. They are saying that silencing that scandal helped Trump get elected, all right? So they're saying that they're really saying that um, Trump not, you know, covering this hush money payment to Stormy Daniels is like a really big way that Trump was able to, you know, keep his image ahead of his, ahead of the 2016 election. Unquestionably, it would be best for the DC trial to go first. The grand MSNBC is like, I don't know who writes these articles, but they're like, absolute Trump haters. It's so wild to me. But I mean, it's very interesting. Uh, Trump's appeal is legally fraught, to put it kindly, less an attempt to win than to delay. <laughs> Special counsel Jack Smith has moved on all fronts to expedite the appeals. He may well succeed and get that case tried on March 4th as scheduled. <laughs> These people literally hate Trump. It's crazy. Bragg's case is the story of a cover-up that may have gotten Trump, the man who would be king, into the Oval Office. There are many people who would like to see Donald J. Trump in prison, including Fannie Willis. There were private emails that were made public where Fannie Willis spoke with uh, other prosecutors talking about Trump's jail sentence. And they said, long after these folks are in jail, we will still be practicing law. I wonder if Nathan Wade, the man who Fannie Willis uh, allegedly had a romantic relationship with, hired him. And then the day after he got hired, he divorced his wife. And then they went on taxpayer funded vacations together and got he got paid over six hundred thousand dollars which he really had no real uh background prosecuting criminal like he his he mainly had experience dealing with traffic tickets this guy nathan wade and now fanny willis he's the one who got trump's mugshot and it's like these people really want trump in jail so i did a little bit of a res a bit of research Alvin Leonard Bragg Jr., born in 1973, he's an American politician and lawyer who serves as a New York County District Attorney covering Manhattan. In 2021, he became the first African American elected to that office. I just hate how they, they put that in his bio, like that's, it's like, I find it a little fishy that like they they use that as a way to like highlight him like that's a big accomplishment that he's the first African American elected to that office. I just hope that like that's not a reason he was chosen and that they chose him because he was fit for the job, not because it's like why would you choose somebody? I don't know. I maybe I'm assuming wrongly, but maybe maybe he just happened to be a really good, you know, lawyer, but but he was elected and so it's really it's really important that we look at that date number that he was he became elected in 2021. This that is not that long ago, my friends. And Lati and that he became the district attorney of uh, Manhattan or the New York County district attorney covering Manhattan. And Leticia James, listen to her. She was a member of the Democratic Party. And she is now the current attorney general of New York, also an American lawyer and politician. She won the 2018 election to succeed Barbara Underwood. Jane, it also says in her bio, Letitia James is the first African-American and first woman to be elected to the position. So it's very interesting because Letitia James came in to be the New York attorney general in 2018. And you guys, I don't know if you guys have seen these videos of Letitia James. They are wild to me, but she, um, you know, I'll just play a little quick clip of it. She, you know, really does not like Trump at all. And that's kind of 
her main her main image and brand is being a massive, massive Trump hater. Let's just watch this for a second. And then I'll show the Alvin Bragg clip, which is even more shocking. He's called me venomous. We will fight back to your attempt to bring Trumpism to New York City. He's called me disgraceful. I would like that they stole the Supreme Court seat. called me radical. Listen, yes, we know he's crazy. Like, where do they find these people, by the way? Like, she's like, we know he's crazy. Yes, yes. Like that, where do they find these people? To just, they're just Trump hating rallies? Radical. Listen, yes, we know. Like that woman there. Listen, yes. Like she didn't even know what Letitia James was going to say. She just goes, yes, like blindly. Yes, yes, yes. Like, we know he's crazy. Yes. Like, this is just like, I think you're out of control, Letitia. Like, take a look in the mirror. You're the one, I think, I think, I, I personally, my humble opinion, I think you're the one who doesn't have a sound mind. But that's just my opinion. And she shakes, too, when she talks. Super weird. Doesn't have a sound mind! We know he's out of control! We know he's losing it! We know his days are numbered! You could just literally, like, see the hateful energy of her in, her in her eyes like look at her eyes like they just look like i mean i don't even know what direction she's looking in but you could tell the way she talks about trump like his days are numbered screaming that to these people i mean what kind of mess like look at her face called me a racist. We've got to stand up to an, an administration which is too male, too pale, and too stale. Okay, well, I'm pretty sure if you're calling people too male and too pale, saying, saying so, an administration is too male, basically slightly sexist, uh, mild, mildly sexist, and saying somebody an administration is too pale, is also, I mean, is unless she's not talking about the color of their skin, I'm pretty sure they are. I'm pretty sure that's what she's referring to, but I could be wrong. Too male, too pale, and too stale. Too male, too pale. And dare I just point out the like white men in the background who were like. I guess we'll chant along with this, but it's like that's those are the people who are like she's describing that she hates, and they're just like standing by her like, uh, I guess we'll chant along. Too male, too pale, too stale. Too stale. Thank you. Anyways, so that's Letitia James, and now I mean that's the one who's going after um, Donald John Trump. But not only that, my friends, but I looked up. Alvin Bragg, um, his basically, he, he on, he ran for, um, what's it called? He ran to be the, uh, district attorney and he, in his advertisement, I really hope I don't get in trouble for playing this. Maybe I'll play it without the audio. For yeah, I'll play it without the audio, but you can just see in the, cause I don't want it to get taken down. That's, that's why I do that. But this is Alvin Bragg's like advertisement is that this is the New York times endorsing it, endorsing Alvin Bragg. And he, he like part of his advertisement to get elected was how he successfully sued Trump. So I was like, this is so weird that I'll, it, is this not, slightly biased at all that Alvin Bragg literally in hit when he ran for office he was saying oh yeah elect me because I successfully sued the Trump Foundation New York Attorney General says Char charity acted as a checkbook for Trump's businesses and political interests so it's like they're kind of talking about how 
you know, they, that he's the best person for the job and he, you know, he was able to go, he's, he, he was able to get after Trump. He was able to get after, go after Trump. There's one more video that I wanted to share with you guys. There was one where he was like talking about, oh, maybe I don't have it. Yeah, he ex he's explaining his charges against Trump. Greg, let's listen. Um, yeah, I, I, I wish I had the other clip because he was like talking about how he just doesn't like Trump. He was like, Alvin Bragg for Trump. I'm somebody who, or Alvin Bragg for Manhattan District Attorney Office. Um, he is explaining the charges against Trump. But listen to this. He was actually also sued back. So Alvin Bragg was sued for not handing over Trump's prosecution documents. Let's listen to this real quick. Well, Manhattan District Attorney Alvin Bragg is facing two lawsuits in relation to his decision to indict Donald Trump. In a Boom, shakalaka. Two can play this game, but a boy. Yeah, Alvin Bragg. He's like, has the weakest jawline I've ever seen in my life. Paul Bragg hit Trump with 34 felony counts related to falsifying business records in the first degree. So, Alvin Bragg faced two lawsuits. Um, he had a, he, he ended up dropping a bid to block Trump investigator from testifying to Congress. So, I mean, this stuff is really coming out against him and they're calling him a hypocrite. Trump lashed out, by the way, at Manhattan District Attorney Alvin Bragg and kind of exposed the truth about Alvin. Let's tune in. Moving now to this, former President Trump lashing out against Manhattan District Attorney Alvin Bragg and the investigation following his arraignment yesterday. That's right. The former president gave his first public remarks at his Mar-a-Lago state hours after facing Judge Juan Marchand in Lower Manhattan yesterday. Trump was charged with 34 felony counts of false... 34 felony counts. Let's listen to Donald John Trump. There get to is get part. no case. There's no case. They kept saying, there's no case. <laughs> Virtually everyone. But it's far worse than that because he knew there was no case. That's why last week he delayed for a month and then immediately took that back and threw this ridiculous indictment together. Came out today, everybody said, this is not really an indictment. There's nothing here. Wow, so Donald Trump really looks really good in this case against Alvin Bragg. And in my opinion, I think this whole like, um, you know, bias with what Alvin Bragg ran on, again, basically saying, oh, like you should elect me because I was able to go after Trump. It's kind of just shows that he's, you know, slightly biased. Um, Biden came out and said that Trump's Iowa win doesn't mean anything. What? So I'm sorry, this is breaking news. I got to share this. This man is so, I can't believe this man. The dude can't even hear, look at him. <laughs> They're trying to talk to him. <laughs> what are you with the Arab American vote during this election? And what Iowa means to you, to your re-election race? Well, I don't think Iowa means anything. When the president got 50-some thousand votes, the lowest number of votes anybody's won got. You know, uh, this idea that it's kind of runaway, I, he can characterize any way he wants. Uh, let's make that judgment. What was the second part of the question? The part was, are you concerned the Arab American... The dude can barely get a sentence out. <laughs> it doesn't mean anything. Like, what? Speak up, buddy. I mean, look at his face, too. He just looks, like, miserable. Like, dude, your time's up, boy. Like, you really want to do another five years of this? Four, four years of this? Because of Gaza, many say they will not vote for you. Well, look, uh, the president wants to put a, the former president wants to put a ban on Arabs coming into the country. We'll make sure he, we understand who cares about the Arab population, number one. Number two, we got a long way to go in terms of settling the situation in Gaza. Jeez Louise, that was, uh, that was today, so that's just an update of how, how he's looking today. Biden said that Trump's win in the Iowa caucuses doesn't mean anything. <laughs> what an absolute joke. So 
Anyways, my friends, that's the major update with District Attorney Alvin Bragg and a little update from Donald J. Trump. So let me know your thoughts in the comment section down below. Thanks for watching. Take care. We'll talk soon.